Dr. Eric, your host for the program. Zone 72 Youth Program focuses on the rights and choices for all adolescents and youth, and the program as well emphasizes on the three-pillar global strategy for adolescents and youth, putting young people at the center of sustainable developments. This program is brought to you in collaboration with the Canadian Association of Midwives and UNFPA. Zone 72 Youth Program airs every Saturday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. on iRadio UI on South Sudan. In today's edition of the program, we shall be discussing basically on Hepatitis B, and later in the show we will get to learn more about it. But before we proceed with our discussions, let's have a brief background about Hepatitis B. According to World Health Organization, Hepatitis B is a, pot is a potentially life-threatening liver infection caused by the hepatitis B virus. It is a major global health problem. It can cause chronic infection and puts people at high risk of death from cirrhosis and liver cancer. A safe and effective vaccine that offers 98% to 100% protection against hepatitis B is available. Preventing hepatitis B infection averts the development of complications including chronic disease and liver cancer. In the context of South Sudan, the prevalence of hepatitis B virus was previously 26%. When mother-to-child transmission of, of hepatitis B virus infection was studied in Juba, South Sudan, 5 out of 9, that is to say 55.5% babies born to hepatitis positive mothers were infected, documenting the high risk of infection in early childhood. Early stage of hepatitis B virus can be very difficult to dictate unless you go for a test and that is the reason as to why it is called a silent killer. So how common is hepatitis B in the country and how does it hinder the lives of young people in the country? For a better discussion on today's topic, I am now joined by Matiok Anthony who is a doctor and also the executive director of Friends and Humanity and Gak Malek, the founder of BTEC and the coordinator of Zone 72 Youth Programme. You are most welcome to Zone 72 Youth Programme on iRadio. Thank you. Thanks so much. Well, to start our discussion with uh, Dr. Anthony, briefly tell us what hepatitis virus is. Uh, thank you, Ayrojo, and the listeners of Ayrojo. Uh, hepatitis is an inflammation of the liver due to various cause of the injuries. The cause of hepatitis can be virus, can be bacteria, can be parasitics, infections, alcohol, drugs, and immune disorder. Hmm. So all these cause hepatitis, and uh, we shift to hepatitis B virus is an infection that attacks the liver and can cause both acute and chronic diseases. So that is all about hepatitis. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Doctor. Now, how common is hepatitis B virus among the youth of South Sudan? And since you are also um, campaigning for this uh, this infection. Uh, thank you. Indeed, hepatitis prevalence is high, though we don't have the accurate data in the country. The accurate data in the country, but what we have, uh, the data collected from uh, blood bank for those who are voluntarily going through screens for donations. So that alone is doesn't give us the accurate data. But the Ministry of Health has estimated 11 percent for the total population in the country. So that 11% uh, doesn't include the young people, it is inclusive. But the accurate data is studies that are scared out to, to, uh, to survey the whole country. The whole population is not yet there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, our coordinator for Zone 72 Youth Program, can you tell us something about hepatitis B virus? How common is it in the country? Well, thank you so much, uh, Winnie. This is a killer disease, silent killer disease, as you put it before. Personally, I have been vaccinated uh, on it. And uh, I was vaccinated due to influence of Friends of Humanity, 
which are I think the only organization in Sasda right now that are campaigning against the hepatitis because this is a deadly disease that as a vaccine it's preventable first of all it's not like others that you have to wait for it to infect you and then you treat it it's treatable at early stage and uh, for that purpose i'm really so glad to be welcome here because i've experienced or lose close ones due to hepatitis yet uh, each vaccine is not expensive first of all it is available in the country and i can say it is out of ignorance that people stay without being vaccinated towards it and unfortunately there is no funding or organizations that are funding it directly say that at least we fight this but we are losing a lot of young people elders and it is not discriminating so i'm so happy to to join uh, dr anthony and discuss this serious topic to whoever is listening today it's good to just go and visit the nearest clinic or hospital first of all be tested after being tested you can uh, you can be vaccinated because uh, when i went for my for my vaccine i was tested thrice Mm -hmm. first test it was negative the doctor advised me to go and stay for some time and then come back i got the second test and i got the third test when when all these tests were, were negative this when he advised me now you are eligible to take your, your vaccine and i took all my doses and i'm so happy and glad to see and see you like friends of humanity spearheading it in the nation because we need to save a lot of young people and elders especially children that are born with it because if a mother is infected there are chances that you might uh, give to your child i think anthony can speak about it more <coughs> because he's a doctor but uh, from uh, from my own experience and things that i've seen it's not a disease that we can really laugh at because when when it shows sign it means it has already reached to the liver and at that time it is irreversible it's done you get it you yeah. you are likely just to wait for maybe whatever thing it will do but let's not wait for that thing that that time that will show the signs and symptoms it's good to 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 cure it earlier before those signs comes in go and test vaccinate and be free okay yeah. and to uh. add on top about the prevalence last year 2021 friends of humanity conducted world hepatitis day and uh, in the world hepatitis day we tested around 667 mm. most of these people were young people out of this we found out 52 52 were positive out of 667 when we rounded up to percentage it was around 7.8 percent so and this is an equation that only 667 we have around that percentage so it means the prevalence is high among the young people and this is the reason we are calling for them to go and know your status mm. so that you 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 will be free if your hepatitis b or hepatitis c negative then you will now go for a vaccine for hepatitis b and there is no way we wait until when you are now at last stage when by you will be told by a doctor take him home or her for the day to be buried so that one is is really not good for the country okay. because losing such energetic young people who are supposed to contribute to the development of the nation is a setback for the growth and the development of the country okay thank you so much doctor for that information and thank you Gak, for uh, vaccinating against the infection now what are um, what are the other types of hepatitis viruses that exist yeah indeed we have five types of viral hepatitis we have hepatitis a hepatitis b hepatitis c hepatitis d and hepatitis e mm -hmm. and these five uh, viral hepatitis have different mode of transmission and there are others that cause chronicity and those that are acute. So with hepatitis A and E, yeah, they, they are physical oral route transmitted. You okay, before we come to the transmission, what are the other signs and symptoms of hepatitis B virus? Uh, thank you for that signs and symptoms. Indeed, hepatitis B uh, has common signs like other diseases, but only that it is a silent killer. One of the signs is that when you have hepatitis uh, B, you will have you will develop loss of appetite. You will also develop nausea and vomiting. You will have fever. You will have uh, abdominal pain. You will also have jaundice. 
at, at the large stage you develop ascites and lower or lower limb oedema. So these are signs of the symptom that if you are not careful you may end up saying I have malaria, I have typhoid because these are the common signs and symptoms of the other diseases. So you don't rule it, you don't just wait to say it have been trained, treating malaria and it's still fever is exists. Please go and know your status to screen these diseases. I so, didn't eat dinner yesterday, let me hope it's not hepatitis. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, and you talk of jaundice. What is it? Yellow fever or what? Yeah, jaundice is a yellowing of the eye. It's mm -hmm. color. Yeah. So when, so when it is not only the eye alone, even the, the, the mucus. The hands, for those who are light skins, you'll find the hands, your palms turns yellow. Your lips, the tongues, the eyes, all turns to be yellow. So we refer it to be yellow fever, but that is not the case. Yellow fever is a disease by it all, but the yellow fever has jaundice, that is a science. So jaundice here doesn't qualify it to be yellow fever or hepatitis. Even severe malaria also causes jaundice. So we need to be very careful when you have someone who is, yeah, who have developed this science, jaundice, you don't write and conclude it is hepatitis. Okay. So, I want to let the public know that jaundice is one of the signs caused by many diseases. Malaria is one of them, uh, hepatitis is one of them, and yellow fever is one of the diseases that cause jaundice. Okay. Thank you, doctor, for that clarification there. And now, how can the three different types of hepatitis be transmitted and which one of them can become severe or can cause chronicity? Uh, thank you. Uh, we... I will begin with A and E because they have the same mode of transmission. Hepatitis A and E transmit, is transmitted through contaminated water. Drinking contaminated water then she means you will get hepatitis. This contaminated water indicates someone who is hepatitis B, hepatitis A or E positive uh, pass the, the, the contaminated this water and the person who was not infected can then drink this water. So it means this person is now going to be affected. So physical oral route means it is feces that is contaminating the drinking water and the persons coming to drink the water get that. So that is what it means. Hmm. That is hepatitis A and hepatitis E. With hepatitis B and hepatitis C, hepatitis D, they have also different mode of transmission, though they share the common. Let me begin with B. Hepatitis B is transmitted from a child from a mother to the child, especially during delivery. So if a mother is positive and the time she deliver, it means the child will get the virus. That is one. Two, is also through sexual intercourse with a partner who is hepatitis B positive. So having sex, especially unprotected sex with a person who is hepatitis B positive and you are not protected, you are not vaccinated, it means you will get the disease. Mm. The third uh, mode of transmission is sharing of sharp objects, such as needles, syringes, or other drugs injectable equipment. So this is ways that hepatitis can also be transmitted, hepatitis B. And then sharing of item. What are these items? One of them is a blade, and also toothbrush. People will say, how can we share a toothbrush when we are in the city? And mind you, in a congested family, you find you may have the same type of the toothbrush and you are putting them in one place. Tomorrow morning, you are in a hurry, you end up taking somebody's toothbrush and you go and use it. So in that way, chances are high for you to get the, 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 the disease, especially if once who use that virus or use that toothbrush, is uh, hepatitis B positive. The next thing is conduct is direct contact with the blood or open sores of an infected person. So this put the healthcare workers at a greater risk because all the time, especially the, the, the people who are at uh, the healthcare professional, if they don't have personal protection equipment, then they are at great risk of getting these diseases. The last is at forcing to blood from the needle stick or other sharp instrument, which I've already talked about. 
So all this is the direct transmission of hepatitis B to a person who is hepatitis negative. With hepatitis C, yes, is through drugs injectable, contact with the blood is the same way how it is transmitted. Hepatitis D is a virus that doesn't affect alone. It needs hepatitis B present for it to infect you. So this is how the viral hepatitis, these different viral hepatitis are transmitted. Okay. Yeah. Now, what can you say about uh, sweat and saliva? Can it also make someone get it? Because this is something um, I do hear out there. People talk about it now. As a doctor, what can you say? Can somebody get um, hepatitis B virus through saliva or sharing like food and other things? Yeah, no, this is not true. Mm. We don't get hepatitis from the saliva. We don't get hepatitis from the sweat. I said earlier on, it is through blood. Okay. You have the blood or semen or vagina secretion. These are the other body fluid that I was talking of. And for you to get that, it means you have to get involved in sexual intercourse. Okay. So you don't have hepatitis to get through sweat or sharing so of the utensil. You don't have that. The only way you can get it is when you are sharing toothbrush. Because when you are brushing, chances are high that you have some gum bleed. And that gum bleeds, you, the person who come after you will also have a chance of getting hepatitis B virus. And remember, hepatitis B virus is such a stubborn virus that can survive outside human body for seven days. So it means when you are sharing, when you just wash and leave it there, don't think the disease will get, you hang it in the sun and think the virus will die. That is not true. Mm. So this is what I can say it about that mode of transmission. Okay, thank you so much, Doctor. Now, among the uh, the many types of viruses, why is hepatitis B a common type than the others? Uh, thank you. The hepatitis is common because of its simplest mode of transmission. You have sexual intercourse, you get it. You share the sharp objects, you get it. You, you, you use the sharp objects for sharing, you have the contact with the person having the wounds and the blood, you get the hepatitis B virus. And remember our culture in South Sudan, the, especially the scarifications is a common racial in South Sudan, whereby you have the lines of young people that uh, in, in especially in the, the rural areas. By then people line up and you have one sharp object either to initiate the head or to remove the teeth. So that alone is a common thing for mode of it mode of transmission. And this is why hepatitis become very common. I remember there is a study conducted by a Sudanese doctor that one of the factor was staying in South Sudan. Staying in South Sudan was also a risk factor, Southern Sudan by then, not South Sudan. Mm. Staying in Southern Sudan was a risk factor for you to get hepatitis. So it meant the endemicity of virus in South Sudan was very huge. And the common things, sharings of these type objects were also the factors contributing. Okay. Thank you. Coming to you, Gak, why is it that young people are at, uh, at high risk of getting hepatitis B virus? What can you say? Well, uh, first of all, as, as a young person, I think uh, most of young people are at a very active age because this is where you really have the energy, the passion. You talk of adolescence and uh, all the things that are coming with uh, with this age bracket of the youth, especially from 15 to, to 35, uh, this is where most, most of the people really mess up in terms of uh, having unprotected sex, of which, as we heard from the doctor, it's, it is one of the main risk factors. And most of the active people that are having this sex are mostly young people. That's why you see even rate of HIV and AIDS infection among the young people is very high. At least for older people, some of them have experienced, they have seen so many things that they can at least settle and say, no, let me protect myself. But I think it's out of ignorance. Uh, number two, it's less education because most of the young people don't get the, the right information, hmm. especially for those who have not gone to school. It's difficult to really access the right information. Personally, I've been thinking that even sweats can, uh, can transmit uh, uh, hepatitis. At least I'm lucky now to share a stage with the doctor who have told me that sweats cannot cannot share it. It's just a matter of uh, of uh, 
blood transfusion and all those things. So I think young people really do not get information. And uh, we need to educate them from family level at school because this topic is mostly ignored. Uh, at my level last year when I was still the coordinator of Shabab Le Shabab, you know, Friends of Humanity used to come to Shabab Le Shabab for support to campaign against hepatitis, say that they can carry out massive tests and, and, and vaccinate those ones who are negative. But we were able to give them small funding that was not enough because one of the main challenges that they are facing, there is no organization for now that is funding hepatitis issues. And most of the victims are young people. So in order to save the young people, it's good to hold hand together with, uh, with organizations like Friends of Humanity that are really doing a great job in, in this thing because all of us are at risk of getting it. Because the thing that I mentioned here, I don't think if there is any of us that is uh, vaccinated against them because things to do with uh, sex, issues to do with uh, maybe mixing up of the toothbrushes at family level because most of us are staying at extended families. Mm -hmm. So the high chance that two toothbrushes can, can mix and, uh, and, and all those kind of things. So if it is something that we are all uh, having risk of having it, a child trans uh, transfusion or infection from the mother to the child, all families always have children. So how do we protect those children? It's a role and a task that cannot be left to one person or one organization like Friends of Humanity or either government alone or either UN agency alone or humanitarian. It's something that all of us have a collective responsibility to come in and, and at least save our population. Okay. okay. Thank you so much, Gag, for that one. And is uh, hepatitis B curable anywhere? Uh, Does no. it have cure? The hepatitis B is treatable, but it's not curable. Okay. It is hepatitis C that is curable. If you have hepatitis C, yes, the three month treatments can cure you and you have, uh, you find yourself you are now free from hepatitis C. So hepatitis C, B is not curable. This is what I want to tell the public. But it is treatable. The treatment I'm talking of here, yeah, people misunderstood the treatments and the, the, cure, the, the curable. Mm -hmm. So when we talk of treatment, you may come for consultation, the doctor give you counseling. That is already a treatment. Yeah. So when you come to check for for viral load, and you you have your viral load liver function test and the, the abdominal ultrasound tested, and this the doctor give you the result. That is already part part of the treatment. So the treatment doesn't need necessary that you are given the drug, then you go and use the drug. That is not exactly what the treatment is. So hepatitis B is treatable, it's manageable, but it's not curable. Okay. Yeah. And uh, why is it that uh, sometimes people who get um, get treatment from hepatitis B in most cases are vaccinated? Why is it happening? Yeah. Once you once once you your immune system fought hard and finds you don't have hepatitis now and you are at risk, you cannot be left for to go and get reinfected. So there is a need for you to be protected from future infection because of the risk you might undergo. So this is the reason when your hepatitis B positive and positive and you find you have developed your immune system fought hard to, to clear the virus in you, then that immune system need to be boosted by giving them a memory that they will be thinking in case this bare virus come back, then they have a chance of mobilizing themselves to clear it off. Okay. So this is why a person who is uh, who is hepatitis B positive and develop uh, at reach a, a stage where you don't you don't you are not longer a viral hepatitis carrier, then you can be protected from further for future infection. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you also mentioned something very important about the stages. It's good, I think, for us to know how many stages does hepatitis B virus have. Yeah, hepatitis B has its stages. There, there is a stage where you you first develop acute stage, mm -hmm. and this acute stage is, is that you get infected, and then the the infections develop in you, and that acute stage doesn't reach you to chronic state. So with acute stage, it can be managed. It can still have your immune system fight from it, and then you end up become healthy living continuity and with chronic stage yeah, chronic stage is where now 
the liver is infected, there, there are complications in you, and then that, those complications is when the doctor, you need to always to take the, a live treatment. Because when it is now to that state, then it means you will be alive, you will be on uh, drugs, live treatment uh, care. So that is the stage that we were talking of, acute and chronic stage. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, uh, as, as someone who has also been vaccinated, I would also like to know from the doctor whether uh, the vaccine of hepatitis act like uh, corona vaccine because uh, with COVID we were told that you, have, you still have a chances of being infected despite the fact that you're vaccinated. Uh, just that it it it, it boosts your, your immunity that in case of any infection at least you can still maintain it. But I know the other is once you're, you're, you're vaccinated, you can never contact it. If I'm vaccinated and uh, maybe I have unprotected sex with uh, with the person with uh, viral hepatitis B, mm -hmm. am I eligible to, to, to get it again <laughs> despite being vaccinated? Yeah. I know the hepatitis B vaccine is uh, 90 to 100% protection. And uh, if you are hepatitis B uh, vaccinated person, then there is a length of time that you will you will be protected. And in case the protection drop, if there is a, a drops in your protections of the vaccines in you, then the the worry is maybe in future if there is that that protection continue dropping, then you may be exposed for reinfection. But uh, the, the the protections you don't get hepatitis B vaccine when you are when, when you don't get hepatitis B infection when you are vaccinated. What is the duration? Yeah, the, 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 the duration <laughs> depends. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, the duration for someone who tested negative and is vaccinated, and also someone who first got infection after treatment is vaccinated. What is the duration? Is it the same? Yeah. With, uh, let me begin with the with the childrens before I come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the children, if you are fully infant, if the infant is fully vaccinated, then you will reach up to thirty years protected. But with adult, because of the other factors, you may you may go back. It depends on how the the protections or the, how risk are you or the other factors that might be in your body. But it it, it depends. You continue checking after ten five years. It did five to ten years, fifteen twenty. It depends on. It is not the same to everybody. So it depends on how. Uh, your immune system is and the other factors that might undergo in your body. Okay. Yeah. All that right. May, that may affect the protection of the vaccine. Uh -huh. What's the duration now? This is what I was saying. That is for a child. Yeah, what about for, for, all for the For adult that got infected, you may have 5, 10, 15, 20 years. It depends on how your immune system protection effectiveness okay. all right yeah thank you so much uh, doctor once again for that information now how can we prevent viral hepatitis uh prevention of viral hepatitis as i stated with a and b uh, with a and e we need a proper waste disposal agents generally so when we have proper agents we don't have any case of hepatitis a and e hmm. then we stop there with hepatitis b is a vaccine prevented uh, virus. You go for vaccines, you test, you find yourself you are protected, and you, you, you get the vaccine. So this is the effective way of preventing hepatitis B, which is the common, uh, the common uh, virus that is very common in South Sudan, among South Sudanese. So vaccine preventable, that is how. With the other hepatitis B, hepatitis C, yes, you don't need to share the sharp objects. You use a single use syringe and needles okay. for, for for those who are using drugs injection, self of drugs treatment. So you don't need to share a needle with others. So with that, we end up protecting ourselves from virus. Okay. Yeah. What about use of condoms? Can it help protect? Yeah, yes, I, I forgot of that because of sexual intercourse, the activeness of the youth. We use condom. Proper use of condoms really prevent us from getting hepatitis B. And with the newborns, there is need for introduction of birth dose vaccine. Because if a mother is hepatitis B positive, then the child within 24 hours is given the vaccine to protect that child from the virus. As I told you earlier, hepatitis B is transmitted 
from mother to child, especially during the birth. So during the birth, you give the first dose vaccine, you end up protecting this child, not getting the virus from the mother. Okay, thank you so much, uh, doctor, for that info. And uh, yes, Gak, remember we are talking about young people. So what can you say about abstinence in regards to young people as the coordinator of Youth Zone? Uh, well, it is good we have got the right information from the right person, which which is a doctor. And uh, uh, on on my side, as a vaccinated person and a youth, also I think I'm safe from B, C, and D. But uh, A and E through contaminated water, I think that is where I personally need to do an assignment by making sure that I take uh, clean water clean drinking water and for those who are contaminating the environment we have had it right away from the doctor please if you can if you can be part of the solution then don't be part of the problem if you can pick uh, kirsalad and fisharia then then don't throw more more kirsalad fisharia and uh, secondly in terms of abstaining i think it is a good thing to be adopted uh, honestly i must say that because according to us previously as africans sex was made for children production the whole africans not only south sudanese and that is why previously there were low rates of uh, stis as well as uh, uh, immorality as, as such unfortunately right now people are changing their realities to put sex as something for pleasure mm. which is which was not our culture it, it didn't mean that the moment you, you as the boy child or as the girl child, once you clock 18 and above, you're eligible to have sex. To us, it wasn't the case. So if, if you talk of abstaining, this is something that has been practical before, and it used to work, and it can still work because there are people who are still abstaining. And for those who cannot manage to abstain because we're not saying it is a must, please protect yourself from STIs, unintended pregnancies because it all has complications. We have been hearing cases of uh, fistula increasing because of issues of child marriage and uh, the woman you marry a woman at a young age, she cannot manage to push properly. Maybe her body has not developed to, to, to push the baby. It's, these are all complications that come because of uh, unnecessary or unneeded sex, sex sexual behavior. So. We, we, we need to get back as a society and ask ourselves how did we used to do our things and how best can we retain some of the cultures that we're having because we can just move in the name of civilization, modernization mm. and throw away some of the good values that were in our cultures. Yes, there are some toxic cultures that needs to be dumped and thrown off but let's retain the beautiful ones and the, and the good ones because by the end of the day, population of 12 million that we have in South Sudan if others are exposed to uh, hepatitis, it will take its own percentage. Others are exposed to HIV, it will take its own percentage. Hunger will take its own, own percentage. Others, uh, the issues of cruise right now, issues of... And we have so many wars and fights that we don't really need to lose more people. We have very few, few populations, sorry. And uh, there is a need of having all these hands in development, especially to youth and young people who are very active, who are at the active age. I oh. think that's what I can <laughs> say. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. to add on top, I want to make this a clarification on the vaccine. The vaccines I was talking of is only for hepatitis B. We don't have vaccine for C and D. So okay. when, when you, the, because of the commonness of B, this is, means you are protected from B. And if you are protected from B, it means you will not get D. Because I said earlier on, D only need B present for it to infect you. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you so much again for that info. Dear listener, you are still listening to Zone 72 Youth Program on I Radio Your Eye on South Sudan. And that was Matiok Anthony, who is a doctor and also the executive director of Friends and Humanity, and Gak Malek, the founder of BTEC and the coordinator of Zone 72 Youth Program speaking. Our studio lines are now open. You can call on 0922986986 or 0911. 986986. Yeah, our SMS line is not going to work for now, so you can reach us via our 
call lines. Our discussion for today is all about hepatitis B. Yeah, what do you know about hepatitis B? And what are the preventive measures that you know? And why is it important for you to protect yourself from it? And also feel free to ask questions of clarification about hepatitis. I'm having experts with me in the studio who will respond to you instantly. Hi, Radio. Hi, Radio. 0922-986-986 or 0911-986-986 are our call lines for you to share your opinion. We are discussing about hepatitis B virus. What I would like to know from you is what do you really know about hepatitis B? If you have idea about it, you can call and share with us. Or if you have any question regarding uh, this topic as well, you can call. I'm having a um, doctor in the studio and also I'm having uh, the coordinator for Zone 72 Youth Program who are here to respond to you regarding our topic of today. The Kulu Mustamein Taizai Radio, itum Lisa Biasuma Le Barnamichita Zone 72 Youth Program, wa hasa de fursatagi asanta bakter serik fi Barnamichita nata alela, ana biwondu sufogo verusta kebit alwa bai yani ita baru sunu fogo verusta kebit alwa bai kef ita be have so nep sabit akmin al uh, al verus de wa kaman le u mohima santa be have so nep sabit ak lo index wal bar do video ma ana fit akil studio ta isai radio al bi jo abo la ita tuale i radio hello i radio i radio Zero nine two two nine eight six nine eight six or zero nine one one nine eight six nine eight six. So you can um, call. You can call our SMS line is not working for today uh, to share your opinion or ask question regarding the topic. I read you. Hello. Yes, please. Mm, you are talking to Francis from Monago. You're welcome, Francis. Mm, I would like to ask some two questions. Welcome. Mm, the first one is, uh, what are the signs and symptoms for hepatitis B? Mm. Mm, then the, the, the second one is, uh, uh, are there some uh, units, uh, some, some test in places where in the areas or in some of the bigger clinics in the, in the community? Or just this one in the main hospital okay thank you thank you <clears throat> thank you so much francis for the question you get the response i think but the doctor explained it uh, earlier about the signs but it's fine maybe you tune in late he will respond it to you zero nine two two nine eight six nine eight six our call line so zero nine two, uh, one one nine eight six nine eight six to share your opinion yeah, maybe, doctor, you can first respond to him. What are the signs and symptoms of hepatitis B? And are there also some units whereby somebody can get tested or only in the main hospital? Uh, thank you, Francis, for your questions. Francis in the global. I may repeat myself. I said earlier on, signs and symptoms of hepatitis B are as follow. One, you have loss, we have loss of appetite as one of the signs. Nausea and vomiting, fever, jundice, stomach pain, dark urine, ascites, and lower limb oedema. So these are the signs of hepatitis B virus. So these signs, as I said earlier on, hepatitis is a silent killer. It is not to everybody that all these signs appear. So it depends to uh, to the the status of the person that the the the, the signs may appear, and there are those that it finishes your liver, and there is no sign that develops. So this is what I can say. Regarding the testings, yes, are there some places for testings in the community? Indeed, we said earlier on that hepatitis doesn't have funding. It was friends of humanity that try our best last year when we were reaching when we were doing hepatitis campaign. We reached out in Log Log One and Log Log Two. Where I think it might be one of the resident, either one or two. 
and we are carrying out that pre testing mm -hmm. that we got from pharmaceutical company Cinco. So, but there are many clinics that you may get this. The test kits are available. You just go to a nearby clinic, has them about the test kits, and you might find they have hepatitis B or hepatitis C test kit. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Doctor, for that. Francis, let me hope you got the answer to your question. You can still call us back on our same studio line. I read you. Hello, I read you. Sifir Tisa, itni itni, Tisa Tamania Sita, Tisa Tamania Sita, au Sifir Tisa, Wahid Wahid, Tisa Tamania Sita, Tisa Tamania Sita, Ragam Tana Tari Salama Vista Kalhasa, Ita Bagder Kola Nafinib Suragam, Lomin Kinita Indu Al Sual, Fogo Verus Takebit Al Wabai, Ita Bagder Kola San Fidiuf Maana, Al Bijua Bola Ita Tuali. I read you. Hello? Yes, please, your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, I'm calling from the law. I'm by name Paulino Law. Welcome, Paulino. Yeah, I'm from the driver's day to all the drivers. Hmm. I'm a man who loves the air. I'm a test. Get positive for your body. I'm a man who grows and I'm a little like that. I'm a man who tells you. Hmm. That's all the air is for. Okay. Shukran Khalis Polino, ma swal bitak. You get the answer shortly from our doctor. You can still call back on zero nine two two nine eight six nine eight six or zero nine one one nine eight six nine eight six. Do not forget that you are still listening to Zone Seventy Two Youth Program on I Radio. Your eye on South Sudan, and my name is Winnie Eric, your host for the program. I Radio. Hello, I Radio. Hi, Radio. Evening. Evening to you. Your name and where are you calling from? I'm calling from Yandio. Your name? My name is James Zanosa. Welcome, James. Yeah, I want to know from the doctor there, is there any traditional medicine which can cure the hepatitis B? Okay. Yeah. All right. Because some other people that there is medicine which can cure hepatitis B, medical. Uh, All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, James, for the question. Now, uh, Doctor, I think you can first respond to the first two callers here. Yeah? That's Polino and James. Polino is asking if someone goes maybe for the treatment and happens not to have money for treatment. What's next? Yeah, thank you, Paulino, for your question. Indeed, this is what France of Yamanti has been advocating for hepatitis intervention in the country. Because there are people who are hepatitis positive and they need their services. And the government and the donors, we don't have a donor for hepatitis. So our push for hepatitis is to see these services are present. We need to we need to have a referral clinics for hepatitis in Juba Teaching Hospital, in Wau Teaching Hospital and uh, Malkal Teaching Hospital, so that whoever is present in those areas can go and assess the services. So this is the very things we have been pushing for, uh, we have been fighting for to make sure these services are brought to the citizen. So for, for now, if the person is hepatitis B positive and he doesn't have money, then that is the challenge. And it is good to know your status. So it can even be ready for that person to lobby from the relative, from whatever little resources they have, and they have treatment here. Yeah. And uh, the next things that I want to also add, we used to refer patients for barrel loads to Khartoum, to Egypt, to um, Germany. But now that services the barrel device uh, is already in Juba, Mil in, in Juba Medical Complex. So you don't need to have, uh, and it is one week's time for you to get your result, unlike when it used to spend a month. So my request to those who, who are hepatitis B positive and they need to go, they need money to go and check those, you can go to Juba, Mil Juba Medical Complex for these services. So this is what I could add to. Yeah, to my brother in Yambio, Yemis, who have asked whether we, do we have a local hub that can cure hepatitis B. Yeah. Indeed, 
I'm not a specialist in local health, but uh, the, those are the common things people are saying. And for my side as a medical person, I don't advise people to go for that because look, this is already a sick labor. It is like when you are sick, you cannot even go to and farm in the farm. You need first to get rest and get cure from the, the, the malaria that we have. So it is the same to the labor. If you go and take this local herb and you don't know the toxicity, then it means you are adding more harm to the already sick liver. Mm -hmm. That may even cause more damage to the liver. So my request to him is that if there are such an individual, please don't listen to because you are harming your liver. The, the level of toxicity in this local herb is not major. So this is what I could say to him. All right. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Yes, Gak. Uh, also to, to the colleague from uh, Lologo who has uh, just asked whether if you are tested and you don't have money. I must confess when I went for my first dose, uh, that is in 2016, uh, I paid, it was 500 pounds per dose, mm. uh, of which I think 500 pounds was, uh, was worth a plate of food in the, in the restaurant. So, you can really risk your all life in the name of 500 SSP. This vaccine or testing is not expensive as, as people think. It, 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 it can even be cheaper than some of the food that you eat for lunch. Mm -hmm. So if, uh, if, if you are sick, health is, is something that you, you don't have an option. It's a must for you to be treated, whether you have job, you have money or not. Please do not just take your life for risk like that because when I went there, I, I was surprised. Why are people dying from hepatitis when its vaccine is very cheap and testing is very cheap like this? Which means what we are lacking here in the country is just information, the right information. But if you go to the hospital and you get, to, you go to, you get the right doctor, they will really advise you of what you can do and what next. And you will be safe in the rest of your life. So. I, 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 can, I can really advise you as someone who has been vaccinated, it is not expensive and I think most of us can afford it because as South Sudanese, we have these cultures of, of living as a community. Mm -hmm. There is nobody who can really leave you to die in the name of 500 or 1,000 SSP. Seriously, how much does coffin cost? Mm -hmm. if, if someone denies you 1,000 pounds and that person will be ready to, to contribute for coffin, maybe to do your funeral, how much is a funeral? So yeah. it's, it's something that nobody really deserves to die from it. And uh, if you are informed, please find time, go to the hospital, get the doctor, and they will advise you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. I read you. Hello, I read you. 0922986986 or 0911986986. In the studio with me is Dr. Anthony Matiok and Gak Malek, the coordinator of Youth Zone 72. And our topic of today is all about hepatitis B virus. What we would like to know from you is what do you know about hepatitis B? If you know about it, share your experience with us. Or if you have any question of clarification, it's the right time for you to ask and get the answer from experts. But I read you. Hello? Yes, please. Your name and where are you calling from? Yes, I'm calling from Yambia. My name is Kizito. Welcome, Kizito. Thanks for the program. Welcome. I've been following the program and it is really very important. Yes, uh, hepatitis is indeed killing people silently. Mm. And, and this basically because we lack information. Of recent, the focus has been on HIV, AIDS, prevention, care, and treatment. Mm. And uh, hepatitis has just been left alone as a doctor is emphasizing it. Oh, what I see a little bit in uh, communities I have lived where there is hepatitis and, and HIV, I see that uh, the risk and the aspect of hepatitis killing is more and than that of HIV, HIV especially when uh, it reaches to a chronic stage, when it is not diagnosed and managed locally, because hepatitis B has a tendency of settling in the liver as a breeding ground. And when one's liver is weakened, the person cannot live longer. If he's not also subjected to early treatment, but at least for HIV, once somebody is tested positive and given proper counseling and has accepted to take treatment, it is easier because the drug, when one takes for six months, 
it will become sustainable compared to, to hepatitis. I think uh, this awareness uh, about hepatitis, uh, general hepatitis prevention, uh, care and treatment need to be scaled up. If it is scaled up, both have radio programming like this, and also if uh, organizations, health partners can do this, it is really something very, very great. Where I stay normally, the communities where I stay, some people, when they are just tested, the society is positive. They want to kill themselves. They want to feel out of place. Some of those things you were asking the doctor, whether sweat, whether eating food can transmit it. People want to feel, feel even it is more worse than HIV. That little shows a gap of awareness. I like thank the program and I will wish to know whether this program will run so frequently so that it is also scaled onto other local radio stations in the various states. I encourage the team to continue with the spirit. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, Kizito, for the positive feedback. And yeah, we got you. That's interesting. And thank you so much for appreciating the program. For those who don't know, Zone 72 Youth Program comes your way every Saturday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And this program is to uh, to give information more, especially to the youth of South Sudan about adolescent health. And you can call us on 922 986 or 0911 986 Hello? Yes, please. Your name and where are you calling from? I'm calling from Arabi State. Yes, what's your name? My name is Paulino from Report. You're welcome, Paulino. I'm not talking in... In, in, in language, no talking. problem, you can talk in Arabic. I'm talking in Dinka language. Mamush. <laughs> in Dinka, okay. I'm very happy to be in this program. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching me. Mm. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Paulino, for appreciating the program. Yeah, even though you're not talking <laughs> English. It's good that you, you you understand what we are talking about and also thank you so much for appreciating. And now I'm going to pick one call. After that, we hear from our guests and we call it a good evening. You still have the chance to call one last caller on 0922 986 986 or 0911 to call and ask question of clarif ask question of clarification or share your experience with us what do you really know about hepatitis b and what question do you have about hepatitis b virus feel free and share your opinion with us because i'm having guests to respond to you i read you Zero nine two two nine eight six nine eight six or zero nine one one nine eight six nine eight six. I read you. Hello. Yes, please. Your name and where are you calling from? Hello. Hello. Ah, this is this is Yakobo from Sukamura. Welcome, Yakobo. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just uh, want to to ask some question. Welcome. About, uh, hepatitis. Welcome. Yeah, because uh, hepatitis, you know, some fast youth now, we are really so worried about this sickness. I don't know. Uh, because I'm a bit late, I don't know. Roughly, uh, the treatment is there. Roughly, how much will it take somebody to get it when, when you know that you really have, you are positive? Okay. And, yeah. And uh, if if you are not yet uh, maybe confirmed for vaccination, why not the government to bring this vaccination in the public hospital, not private, like in the medical complex? Because I see that medical complex is a uh, hospital, the private one. Why? Why like that? That is my question. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Yakobo, for the interesting question. Doctor is here. He will get back to you uh, immediately. Yeah, he's asking how long does it take for a person to recover from treatment after testing hepatitis B positive? 
Yeah, to answer you how long it will depend at what stage it has reached. If it has reached a chronic state, that is what I said before, you will be on live treatment. Mm. So when it is an acute and you have, you, you are not drinking, you are not smoking, then your immune system is strong, then in acute state you can be following up in six months, in one year time, and then you see you are regaining your health. So this is what I can say to him. And why is the government not bringing? This is the same things I'm even asking government officials. I reach out to parliamentarians. We are pushing in the parliament. We are even pushing through Ministry of Health. And the same answer, there is no budget for hepatitis. We are pushing through UN agencies. The same, the same information, we have, there is no donor. So you and me can also do things for our country. So I would like you, as you have heard, do your part. Be our hepatitis ambassador. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Doctor, for the answer, Yakobo. Let me hope you got what you really need to hear. And uh, now, back to my guest again. What is your last remark concerning hepatitis B virus? Let me start with Mr. Gak. Uh, thank you. Uh, before I give my last remarks, I would also like to to get back to our colleague who was just called from Yambi regarding this program, appreciating it and asking if we can carry out more. Mm -hmm. As the coordinator of this program, I can uh, I can proudly tell you that this program has been running since last year and uh, we are planning to continue with more programs like this. This is Youth Zone 72. Every Saturday from 4 to 5, just tune in and you will get uh, interesting topics today we are discussing hepatitis b which has become very interesting and we might bring it back we'll just sit down with the team and see whether this topic we can have it more frequently in order to inform people there are certain topics that sometimes we bring them back and and, and discuss them again and others we discuss them once so that one is uh, is cut out for always tune in from four to five and this program is yours uh, secondly, in regarding to treatment and prevention of this disease, as doctor said, they have been going to the ministry, UN agencies, and advocating on this, but still there is no budget because everything needs money. Now it's upon anyone that is listening, being a citizen, being a government official, being a UN agency, to at least allocate a certain budget for this hepatitis because it's a killer disease that all of us are threatened by it. It can either get you a family member, lovely ones, and all those kind of things. So it's something that we can all take responsibility, especially from the government, because government is uh, is responsible for everything that's happening in the country. And for that purpose, we l l l let's wait and see. It's good media like uh, I Radio are giving this discussion a chance because I'm very sure there's someone right now inside there that has never heard of a hepatitis that is li listening to this program and, and, and get educated. The best thing that we can do as the owners of the program is to allow more discussion on this and let's hope the ears that are listening. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, doctor. Yeah, thank you so much. I will quote the director of the show. Uh, message during World Hepatitis Summit. This is what he said about hepatitis. Hepatitis is one of the most devastating disease on earth. But it is also one of the most preventable and treatable with services that can be delivered easily and cheaply at the primary care level. So this is what I want to say. My message to everyone who is listening, go to a nearby clinics, know your status. Hepatitis can wait. Hepatitis is real and hepatitis kill. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for that. And youth can always send us questions about adolescent health to youthzone72 at gmail.com or call 0922-009-497. Like our Facebook page, youthzone72. And the hotlines include for GBV is 623, COVID-19 is 6666, adolescent health immediate is 885. With that, we have come to the end of today's edition of Zone 72 Youth Program, which tackled hepatitis B. And my guests in the studio were Matiok Anthony, who is a doctor and also the executive director of Friends and Humanity, and Gak Malek, the founder of BTEC and the coordinator of Zone 72 Youth Program. Thank you for participating in the show and remember to join me again the coming Saturday at 4 p.m. for another edition of the program. My name is Winnie Eric. Until next time, stay safe. Yeah, 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 yeah
Bata, 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 Bata,